Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at gynecological history taking. So this history taking template is taught to me by a professor who taught me in my obstetric ONG rotation, obstetrics and gynecological uh, rotation. Um, so in his template, uh, he has taught us that we need to first identify the patient. There are five. Uh, there are ten identification points for identification. Presenting complaint and history of presenting complaint should be the bulk of your history. Um, this should um, be guided by a few questions. Uh, we, uh, why is she here? Which is the presenting complaint. Uh, the onset and progression of the presenting complaint. Uh, risk factors um, and what was done uh, and how is she now so for why is she here it's obvious uh, so you ask uh, why you're in the hospital uh, as in uh, what made you come to the hospital and onset and progression when did it start and uh, how did it progress after that did it get better did it get worse or the other symptoms crop up what other symptoms Risk factors um, are things that you know that might contribute to whatever she's presenting with. For example, if she has a miscarriage, you ask about previous miscarriage, you ask about uh, previous uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, things like that. Um, what was done um, when she she went to the clinic usually she goes to the clinic and then goes to the hospital what was given in the clinic what kind of treatment what kind of scans what kind of medications they help and then how is she now is she in any pain is she bleeding right now uh, is she having fever things like that next is uh, this acronym known as PM GOTS not AM GOTS but PM GOTS um, stands for past medical, gynecological, obstetric, drugs, and surgical history. So for uh, gynecological um, history taking, you omit the gynecological part of it. Since you're already asking the gynecological history, so it's past medical, obstetric, drug, and surgical history. So past medical history, do you have any diabetes, hypertension, or any other medical conditions? Um, uh, Obstetric history. Um, have you given? Are you pregnant? Have you given birth? Um, in, were there any complications during pregnancy? Were there any complications during your previous deliveries? Right. Drugs and what medications are you currently taking? And surgical history. Have you had any surgery? straightforward um, next comes FFF which stands for family history family planning and finance family history asks if any of the family members have uh, similar conditions because the condition might be uh, genetically related so family members might have the same problem uh, family planning uh, means you're planning uh, how many kids you want to have or uh, you want to plan the gap between each child. So, for example, you give birth to the first child, you want to plan, oh, I want a gap of three years between my elder child and my younger younger child. So, yeah, taking contraceptives for this. So, ask about contraceptives. Uh, what kind of contraceptives they are taking. Um, and ask about finance as well. This uh, finance part actually um, applies more towards the obstetrics history taking. Obstetrics is for pregnant women uh, more than 24 weeks uh, as in uh, obstetric history taking because finance is a very important uh, social circumstance that will impact uh, mm, the pregnancy. Like if you are more financially well off, you usually you have uh, less problems in pregnancy because you have uh, good uh, nutritional intake. Um, if anything happens, you have the you have the money to. It's sort of like the inverse care law, if you have ever heard of it, the inverse care law. So the rich people actually get good 
health education, uh, not, not really health education, good health care. And the poor actually get worse health care than the good, than the well off. So, um, as doctors are always trying to work, trying to overcome this inverse care law and try to help the less fortunate, the more needy, less financially well off. Right, we're going off tangent here. So SSS stands for social history, sexual history, and smear, cervical smear. So social history asks if she smokes, if she drinks, um, um, asks about her relationship with her husband. Uh, this will gauge the amount of support that she has at home. Uh, sexual history, um, she, she's sexually active. Uh, how many sexual partners do you have? Uh, cervical smear. Um, when was your last smear? Is to check for. This is also known as Pap smear. Cervical smear is also known as Pap smear. Is to check for cervical cancer. And it's routinely done. Uh, every three years. Every three years between the age of twenty five and forty nine in the UK. And every five years between the ages of fifty and sixty-five, uh, can check on that. Uh, so cervical smears. When was your last one? And how was the result? What was the result? Was it normal? Right. Eyes, ideas, concerns, and expectations. What are your thoughts on the disease? Uh, on your condition. Um. What uh, is there anything in particular that you're worried about regarding your condition, and um, what is there anything particularly uh, in particular that you would like the doctors to help you with? Right, a uh, ice is a standard question in history taking, uh, uh, because uh, without asking the concerns and expectations, you'll never know. And then uh, you need to know their concerns and expectations to so, um, to make it more a more holistic care. As, uh, for example, if, if you don't address the concerns, uh, she'll never be satisfied with the treatment because the uh, concern is not addressed yet. Let's say uh, she's concerned about her shortness of breath, uh, she's not breathing, uh, she's having difficulty breathing. Uh, you need to address the concern by um, treating it or um, advising her, talking to her about it so that she doesn't worry that much uh, if it's not uh, anything serious. Yeah, so that's an example that I can give. So always address ice. Okay, we'll go through it one by one. First, we'll be looking at identification. Um, this uh, Dr. Hassan, our professor, has taught us uh, 10 points that you need to ask for identification. So, uh, first is the name, second is age, third is race, fourth is occupation, family nucleus uh, is whoever is staying with the patient, in the same house. So this is to gauge uh, mm, the amount of support that she has. So who, whoever she lives with, uh, who's at home taking care of her, how many kids does she have, sort of drawing out a family tree and whoever's in the same house. Uh, gravida and parity. Um, gravida if she's currently pregnant parity how many times she has given birth uh, LMP stands for last menstrual period this is a very important question in gynecological history taking um, and then if she's pregnant you ask for the expected date of delivery and period of gestation uh, logistics means how far is her house from hospital so you can gauge whether or not to it, it affects management sometimes, uh, whether or not you discharge, uh, send them home, and uh, it depends on, sometimes depends on how far the house is. Um, 
like in rural areas the house might be three days walking distance away and she might deliver uh, anytime so you are gonna decide whether or not to keep her in the hospital based on that um, known medical condition and control no medical condition and control yeah so do you have diabetes or hypertension and how's your control this is more to uh, obstetrics as well mm -hmm. and if she's pregnant it's more to obstetrics also uh, was the pregnancy planned or unplanned this can gauge the level of support as well if it was planned it's more likely that she has uh, more support for this current pregnancy more family support, social support, financial support, etc. Right. Next, after identification, we go to presenting complaint and history of presenting complaint. HOPC stands for history of presenting complaint. Ask relevant questions depending on the presenting complaint. So, um, you can structure it uh, like how I mentioned just now. Uh, this is to make it flow as a story. So why is she, so you, when you're presenting the history, uh, it makes sense, right? Why is she here? Onset and progression, risk factors, what was done, and how is she now? And then, um, based on uh, what symptoms they present with, let's say they uh, present with a complaint of heavy menstrual bleeding, you're gonna ask a group of questions first before other questions. Uh, so. Uh, for heavy, heavy menstrual bleeding, you're gonna ask for bleeding symptoms first, then ask others if you have time. But these are the most relevant questions. So uh, let's go into it. Uh, it's divided into bleeding symptoms, sexual symptoms, and urinary and prolapse symptoms. For bleeding symptoms, uh, these are regarding the menstruation. How frequent is the menstruation? Every how many days uh, does your menses come? So what's the, how many days between your first day of your first menses and the first day of your second menses? So this is uh, frequency, duration, how many days are you bleeding for, uh, during your menstruation? How, how long does your menstruation last? And uh, is it regular? Um, do you have uh, intervals where uh, you have two months, you go two months without your period? or is it consistently about 28 days apart that's regular and heavy um, the amount of blood so you a very good very good uh, way to gauge is uh, a very helpful way to gauge is uh, you can ask the number of pads that she's using uh, and um, it's very arbitrary but you can judge based on the number of pets and then you ask how full is each pet is it totally soaked or not uh, usually we would uh, say that more than about more than six to seven pets a day is considered as heavy menstrual bleeding and presence of clots right whenever there's heavy menstrual bleeding there's likely to be uh, blood stasis in the uterus and uh, this will cause the clots formations so the presence of clots can indicate heavy menstrual bleeding as well and flooding uh, you experience like suddenly uh, your blood flooding out of your uh, vagina um, uh, does it does it flood out and flow out of the pad sometimes that's less flooding and uh, is it painful painful menstruation is known as uh, dysmenorrhea so yeah and then these are intermenstrual bleeding postcoital bleeding and postmenopausal bleeding IMBPC BPMB so intermenstrual bleeding uh, is uh, bleeding in between the menses so let's say you have menses for uh, seven days and then you stop bleeding and then you have another uh, you have another episode of bleeding for two days and then you stop bleeding and then you uh, bleed again uh, during your uh, the start of your next menses so that's uh, intermenstrual bleeding uh, post bleeding 
uh, coitus means uh, intercourse, uh, penetrative intercourse, and so uh, postcoital means after intercourse bleeding, right. postmenopausal bleeding. So after uh, your menopause, it's usually after the age of forty-five ish. Um, yeah. So after menopause, uh, and you still have bleeding. So these are the bleeding questions. Again, how frequent, duration, regular, heavy, painful, uh, intermenstrual bleeding, post bleeding, and post-menopausal bleeding. Next, we'll go to sexual symptoms. Uh, are you sexually active? If so, uh, is the intercourse painful? If it's painful, is it uh, pain on superficial, is it superficial pain or deep pain? What kind of pain is it? Uh, is it uh, a punching pain or a sharp pain? Uh, based on my experience, uh, punching pain um, refers to the ovaries, the involvement of the ovaries. So it's like getting kicked in the balls when having uh, sex, right? So it's a punching kind of pain uh, versus a sharp pain. Um, which is more indicative of uh, endometriosis. And then is it during the intercourse or after in intercourse? And uh, what con contraceptives are you using and what have you used in the past? These are your uh, questions to ask if she presents with sexual symptoms. Right. Next, uh, urinary and prolapse symptoms. Um, I can remember this by uh, fun then dysuria, hematuria, and dragging sensation. Right. Fun stands for frequency, urgency, and nocturia. Frequency is uh, how many times do you urinate in a day? Um, I believe more than, more than seven or eight times, more than seven times is uh, considered as frequent urination. Urgency is the strong urge to go to the toilet to urinate. Um, which um, like you can't hold it back. Nocturia is um, do you wake up at night to go and urinate? Um, how many times at night is nocturia? Uh, dysuria is painful urine during pain you during urination, and hematuria is blood in the urine. Dragging sensation usually applies to prolapse, uh, where they, they'll describe it as a dragging sensation down below. Right. And that's the end of my presentation. I hope it helps. Thank you.